In this video, we're going to give a brief review of operational amplifiers. You'll recall that an operational amplifier is a little silicon device consisting of a number of transistors and things inside it. We're not really concerned what's inside it at this point, but these are devices which take signals, either current or voltage signals, and increase the power by either increasing the voltage, the current, or both of them. An operational amplifiers have a number of inputs and a single output, and so we want to just review what those inputs are. First of all, you'll notice the inputs are labeled with a negative sign and a positive sign. There's two different inputs. The output, then, is a scaled version of the two of the difference between these two voltages. This is V2 and this is V1, and the output will be some scaled version of the difference between those two. The input terminal marked with a minus sign is known as the inverting terminal. It doesn't, that minus sign isn't meant to imply that you can only have negative voltages here. It simply means that voltages that are applied to this input will experience an inversion of sign. In other words, at the output, the component of the output that's related to the signal connected to the inverting terminal will have an inverted sign or it'll be a minus. There'll be a minus sign associated with it. On the other hand, this input with a positive sign at it, once again, doesn't mean that you can only put positive voltages here. It just means that voltages connected to the non-inverting, and this terminal here is known as the non-inverting terminal, will appear at the output with the same sign as the voltage here. So if it was positive here, the output will have a positive voltage. If it was negative here, the output will have a negative voltage. Again, contrast that to the voltages connected to the inverting terminal where they have an opposite sign. So we have these two input terminals. The first opti ideal op-amp approximation is that the current going into either of these terminals is approximately zero. Now it's not exactly zero, but it's very, very small. And when the operator is op when the operational amplifier is operating in its linear region, and by that we mean that the output is then just a scaled version of the difference between these two voltages. When the op amp is operating in that linear region, the currents going into either of the inputs are so small relative to the currents surrounding it and the, the circuits surrounding it that we can say that they are close enough to zero that we will approximate them as zero. So we're going to reference the current going into this terminal as either I2 or it's also sometimes referred to as I sub P where P stands for the positive sign, I sub N stands for the negative sign. And under whatever you call it, the current going into both of these, we're going to assume is zero. Along with that is the idea that the input resistances seen looking into either of these terminals is infinite. So if you've got an infinite input resistance, no matter what the voltage is out here, there will be no current going in. So the second ideal op-amp approximation is the input resistance to both of those terminals is infinite and the current going into those terminals is zero. The third approximation is that the voltage difference, V2 minus V1, or sometimes it's also referred to as V sub P, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, and V sub N, the voltage at the inverting terminal, whatever, however we, we refer to it, the voltage difference across those two, VP minus Vn is very, very small relative to the voltages in the circuit around it when it's operating in its linear mode so that we say that they're approximately equal or that V sub P minus V sub N equals zero. Now again, it's not exactly equal to zero, but it's very, very close to zero when the operator, when the amplifier is operating in its linear region. The next ideal op-amp approximation is that the gain term, the scalar that multiplies this V2 minus V1, this difference voltage between the two terminals, is very, very large. In fact, we're going to assume that it approximates or it approaches infinity. In reality, the gain terms on the order of 50,000 or 100,000. So 5 times 10 to the 4th, 
10 times 10 to the 4th, a very big number. So that when you take a very big number and multiply it by a very small number, you get a number that's reasonably sized. And by reasonably sized, we mean that it'll be a value, the output value will be some value that falls between the power supply voltages. There's a power, there's two power supply terminals, the, the terminals where you connect your power supply. And we'll sometimes refer to these as VCC and, and negative VCC. Generally speaking, you have a positive and a negative um, power supply connecting or hooked up to the operational amplifier. We mentioned that the output signal is going to have more power than the input signals. And the source of that power are these power supplies. It goes perhaps without saying, but we're going to say it anyway. Thus, the output voltage can't be any greater than the positive power supply voltage. And the output can't be any less than the negative power supply voltage. And those voltages are sometimes referred to as rails because they represent the boundaries between which the output must fall. The ideal op amp approximation that the voltage at the non-inverting terminal and the voltage at the inverting terminal are so close to each other that we can call them equal, or that V2 minus V1 is equal to zero. Thus, we're going to say that V sub n, the voltage at the inverting terminal, is the same as the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. That's referred to as the virtual, or as a virtual short. It's virtual in that there's no current flowing between those two. In fact, we're saying that the current going into those two terminals is zero. But that the voltage across them is very small. In fact, it's so small that we're going to say it's effectively the same. That there's effectively a short between those two terminals. And finally, the output resistance, not even shown in this diagram. The final op-amp approximation is that the output resistance to the amplifier, or up from the amplifier, is very, very small. In fact, we're going to say that it's so small that we can approximate it as equaling zero. What that means is that within the operating limits of the amplifier, the voltage coming from the amplifier will be relatively constant, effectively constant, over a re relatively large range of currents. So. The output of an amp of an op amp is typically the the output current is somewhere in the 10 to 20, maybe 30 or 40 milliamps, and as long as you don't draw more than what the amplifier is spec'd at, the voltage will re will remain pretty close to the same over the large range of uh, current demands to the load, and so the way we model that is that the output resistance of the operational amplifier is relatively small, we're going to approximate it as being zero. Now let's quickly review how we can analyze circuits involving operational amplifiers using those ideal op amp approximations. So here's our inverting terminal, our non-inverting terminal, here's the output. You'll notice that there are two different input voltages, V1 connected to the inverting terminal, V2 connected to the non-inverting terminal. You'll notice that there's a feedback resistor going from the output terminal back to the input or to the negative to the inverting input terminal. We're going to learn later on that this resistor is called a feedback resistor and that it provides negative feedback and that that negative feedback constrains the output so that the amplifier remains in that linear range that we've been talking about. So let's just go ahead and um, derive an expression for the output voltage in terms of the two input voltages and these resistors in the circuit around the amplifier. To do this, we're going to take advantage of the, of the ideal op-amp approximation that the voltage at the inverting terminal is approximately the same as the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. And the way we're going to analyze this circuit is we're going to write a node equation at the inverting terminal. We choose the inverting terminal because it's the inverting terminal that has the link to the output voltage. So let's call this V sub n, the voltage at the inverting terminal. We're going to call this V sub p. 
the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, and you can see that in this case, V sub P is just equal to V2. Let's go ahead and write a uh, node equation at the inverting terminal. We're going to start doing it in terms of V sub N, and then we'll go ahead and substitute in V2 in just a minute. So the current leaving this node going in this direction is going to be V sub N minus V1 minus V1 divided by R1 plus the current going into the inverting terminal using the ideal op amp approximation we're going to say that that current is zero plus the current leaving this node going in this direction then is going to be V sub N minus V out divided by R2 the sum of those three terms equals zero. Now let's go ahead and combine terms. We've got a V sub N term, two of them. We've got V sub N times one over R1 plus one over R2. Then we have a V1 term minus V1 times one over R1. And then we have a minus V out over R2. Let's take that to the other side as a positive V out times 1 over R2. Now, let's clean this up and solve for V out by multiplying both sides of the equation by R2 and rewriting it so that we have V out on this side of the equation is then equal to. Now, R2 times this, we've got a V sub N times, multiplying R2 times these two expressions, we have R2 over R1 plus R2 over R2, that's just 1 minus, and this is, uh, this should be V1 here, minus V1 times R2 over R1. Gives us then the expression for V out. So V out is equal to V sub N times this minus V1 times this, but this is R2 over R1. Now, using the virtual short, we know that V sub N is equal to V sub P. And we're trying to get the output voltage in terms of V1 and V2 and R1 and R2. So V sub P then is just V2. So we can replace V sub N with V2 and we get that V out is equal to V2 times R2 over R1 plus 1 minus V1 times R2 over R1. That's the expression that we've been looking for. Let's take a look at it. First of all, you'll recall that this terminal here, the one that's marked with a positive sign, we called the non-inverting terminal because we said that at the output, the component at the output due to or associated to V2, associated with the, the uh, signal connected to the non-inverting terminal would have the same sign as V2. And sure enough, we've got no minus sign here. The output, here's the component of the output due to V2. It's got a positive sign in front of it. On the other hand, the, this was referred to as the inverting terminal because the voltage associated with the input or connected with this input had a inversion of sign or had a minus sign multiplying it. And that's exactly what we see here. At the output, the term associated with V1 has got a minus sign multiplying it. So the voltage connected to the non-inverting terminal has a positive, positive sign. The voltage connected to the inverting terminal has a minus sign associated with it. Now, one other thing you're going to notice is that the scalar, the gain term multiplying V2, and the scalar or the gain term multiplying V1 are almost the same, but not exactly. This is R2 over R1. This is R2 over R1 plus 1. So it turns out that the gain or the scalar, the, the value that multiplies V2 to give you the output, is slightly larger than the scalar that multiplies V1 to give you the output. We're going to see later on a way to make those two scalars at the output have V1 and V2 multiplied by the same, the same scaling factor. But just to show how this works, let's go ahead and put some values in here. Let's assume that R2 equals, say, 5 kiloohms, 
and R1 equals 1 kilo ohm. If that was the case, we'd have then V2 times R2 over R1, that's 5 over 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6, minus V1 times R2 over R1, that's 5 over 1 is 5. So in this case, the V2 term at the output is multiplied by a 6, value of 6, and the V1 term is only multiplied by a value of 5, and of course you got the minus sign in there.